挙式紫。紫
think old habits die hard for the health. Definitely burn Dragon Song and Savior. And then I'll just take Blood Iron Spirit. And then two points into Song Chan. Alright, let's keep investing our points. That was probably the easiest angel fight I've had. And it only took a tornado on one crit. Alright, and with this we should be able to power up again. Alright, there we go. I'm actually gonna go guarantee. Oh, never mind. Apparently this shrine is only usable if you're Lone Warrior Origin. Unfortunate, but we can make it work. Definitely want Neuro. Another wild card slot is very useful on this build. Breathing, ex breathing exercises, more HP. And I think I'll take Gale Launch. While it doesn't do a lot of damage, being able to run away in the depths is incredibly good. Oh, Jesus, already posture pricking. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Enforcer got shredded. I used Tornado, you got posture pricking. Damn. Alright, maybe farming in the depths with Tornado is going to be way easier than I thought. Let's see how it does against Sand Knight. With a little luck, this Tornado should kill him. And there we go. Wow. Okay, yeah, Tornado is already dealing a ton of damage. All right, that's all the willpower we'll need for now. Although we are going to get 80 willpower before we Shrine of Order, just for Heretic Sutra. Now I'm going to go into Fortitude, just so I can get Unfazed, as well as some useful Fortitude cards. Underdog, definitely need that. Let's see. Uh, do not need Defiant till the end. I'll just take loot skipper for the extra carry load and get my third point to song chan all right we've only got one more trial ahead of us then we're just gonna go to the depths oh i thought this was the chakra trial probably shouldn't have used tornado but it doesn't matter yeah see i, to I told you <laughs> see i told you guys i'm a little rusty with trial i even forgot the order all right final power up warrior's respite this card is required since we can't use the campfire in depths i need to be able to heal somehow nothing i really need here i'll just fold of course let's see what this mystery mantra is gale trap perfect i need that and yep one tornado killed it very nice. Let's invest the last little bit of points and the trial is over. Let me just make sure to lock the stats we don't want to invest in. I do not want to ruin the build. All right, and there we go. Trial of one complete. Let's head to the depths. All right, we're in a Singapore surfer, but that doesn't matter since we're just going to sail to the nearest whirlpool. While we can't sell stuff in the depths, I should just be able to transfer notes from another account if I ever need to buy training equipment. That's kind of the downside of not going deep bound. We can't sell stuff in the depths. Regen sanity at Castle of Life or use that little campfire but it should all be fine all right let's spawn our dinghy and we're gonna have to sail to Lorisia. all right here we are let's jump into the whirlpool and i'll see you guys in the depths uh this is bad i am in a singapore server and there is an alpha shocker right there it's a good thing i got out of combat from a thresher that hit me we almost swiped but we didn't it's just kind of taught me that i shouldn't be hanging around in singapore depth servers since i cannot fight back against anything in them so let's Let's just hop over to our region and hopefully there's nothing bad that spawns on us. Before I forget it, the main inspiration for suddenly making another Gale build to farm Fairyman actually came from me watching one of my favorite small streamers, Asshole Cake. He does pretty frequent streams on Deep Woken, and I saw him progressing a Fairyman farming build. So I thought I'd try my hand at making one better than his and progressing it. So hey, if you want to see some of his streams, definitely check him out. He's also the one that started the Astral method where you sail out into Void Sea. All right, let's see if I can aggro one Thresher and we'll try to fight it. Oh, that's two Threshers. Nope, I am gone. Not fighting two at once just yet. I don't know how I hit both Threshers. Anyways, let's just head to Castle of Light and I should be good there. I think as a Void Walker, the Divers don't automatically target you, but I'll need to make sure. If they do, it's going to make the progression a little bit harder to say the least. Alright, let's see. Uh, they don't seem to want to target me. Hey, nice. Alright, now I should just be able to kill this Thresher. Sadly, I can't use Tornado with other people around, otherwise the Divers are going to get mad at me. So I'll just have to deal with only using Gale Trap. This man is using dual guns as a deep bound. It's an uh, interesting strategy, but hey, if it works, it works. All right, we are a low power, so we're not going to be killing this treasure super fast. But hopefully I can redeem myself from the trial and flawless it. Oh, just as I said that, I had to get a lag spike. Oh my god, I would have already killed the thresher. 
but you know, I can't use Tornado with this man around. As long as I just focus up and parry this Thresher, I should be fine. If I Gale Trap them, it's all over, because all the Divers are going to aggro onto me. You know what? The Divers are going to be on it, so I think I'll just leave them to their job. While I'm here, I might as well go by the Boulder. I'll probably need to ask a Freshy for some notes, just because I can't sell. However, XP down here will be insanely fast. So let's see. Oh, wow, never mind. I already have enough points to power up. That's pretty much just from the XP out of trial. Let's see, I don't want Herbivore. I don't actually mind Gormad. You know, I think I'm gonna take this here just for the extra carry load. Since more carry load on this build means I can make more money. I might as well take that. I will be using this build to passively farm notes also, just because I wanna max out my bank slots and just put more notes in the guild base, since that's never a bad thing. Oh, let's see, I'll take Last Resort and now let's go kill this Lionfish. Come over here, Lionfish. Tornado is definitely doing a ton of damage to its health. Okay, I cannot fight in a group. I was gonna chuck a Gale Trap its way and back up. Sadly, I got put in combat by someone, so I'm gonna need a Warrior's Respite up before I go back in for round two. Oh, Lionf why did he aggro onto me? He just swam over to me. Oh, oh my god, my bad, all. Oh. Ah, you know, Progging with plays is very helpful, but sometimes they can get in your way and combat tag you, which I don't like. Let me just stand up here and Warriors Respite up. It's also a corrupt shark go over there. Very glad I did not go out there. All right, I'll cut back to when I'm all healed up. All right, they've managed to lure this shocker in here. So while they're distracted fighting this, I'm actually gonna go kill this lionfish since no one else on it would make it, will make the fight way easier. Hopefully I can kill this lionfish before they come out here. Oh damn, got a jellyfish on us. Oh, and lionfish dead. Hey, let's go. And I got it before anyone else even came out here. And now there's not really much use in me getting any loot from the chest. Which I do want that black diver if he didn't take it. Never mind. It's all right. I'm sure we'll get it. It's all right. I have a profits cloak on my main slot. I'll just transfer that over when it's time. All right. Now I'm going to just keep investing my points and hope that I power up. I actually might. Oh yeah. The Vow of Thorns buff really goes hard. I'm almost at 50 fortitude already. That's going to give us exoskeleton to the finish as well as unfazed. Although to think of it, I don't really need to the finish on this build since it's against fairy man and Primadon, I'll be killing them so fast that the damage reduction won't matter. But Unfaked is kind of a must. That way I can go insane to prop piercing will and lose your mind. Anyways, let's wait around for some more stuff to spawn. Alright, a bunch of stuff has started spawning in, so I'm gonna take out this crab. Should not have tried to block that. Yeah, that grab attack is going to be very annoying. Crabs are kind of annoying to deal with. I might try to cheese this one. I'm pretty sure I can just get him up against the wall and send a tornado his way. There's nothing he can do. I'm just going to do this. Hey, it's a lot easier than actually trying to, you know, parry this thing. I just need to wait till he attacks. Then I'll just send a tornado and back up. Hey, this is actually the meta. Ooh, okay, that hit me. I need to be careful. Oh, Terrapod! <laughs> Jesus Christ, that man came out like a jump scare. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna sit up here and hopefully the divers aren't too angry at me. A warrior's respite up and try to kill that crab once again. All right, I've healed up a decent amount. I should be able to try to kill that crab again. Is he gonna aggro? Oh, these jellyfish are. Let me just send a tornado their way. Oh, never mind. that tornado literally faded right before I hit them. Okay, I'll just try to kill this crab instead. It's not corrupt, so it should be a lot easier to kill. These things are actually kind of easy to parry once you like get into a rhythm of doing it. Yeah, that slam attack is very annoying though. If you miss that parry, you can always dodge after. I actually find the grab to be the hardest part. Okay, my gale traps aren't really hitting it, which is kind of annoying. And crab dead, not too hard. Obviously nothing we can really use in this chest, but that should be enough XP for a power up hopefully. And power up, perfect. Let's see what we get. All right, nothing we really need here. Ah, uh, ready or not, I guess is all right. Impervious, that's kind of useless with what we're doing. You know, if we get knocked against Prim or a Fairyman, we're just dead. Unfazed, definitely need that. Gale Punch, also is something that we 100% need. It does a ton of damage. Oh, and we're actually at the max fortitude we need. Perfect. So now I'd say we just go into max int. All right, guys, we're about to power up once again. Vow of Thorns is definitely making this go fast. Depending on the build, it's incredible. All right, uh, I think I'll just take this for the carry load. You know, more carry load on the build is always good. Let's see, Mantra Permanence could be good. I guess I'll take it. Exhaustion Strike. Oh, we need to reinforce. Let's see, and we'll take five Song Gen. All right, let's keep using the map textbook. And next wave of mobs. I'll just send a Gale Trap its way. These things are actually kind of easy to fight if you know what you're doing. I mean, I kind of wasted my tempo. Oh, multiple things on me. All right, backing up. 
and I am going to back up. All right, King Jelly dead. We have some intelligence potential. Listen, I did start using the encyclopedia, but I cannot be forced to do more math textbooks. It doesn't seem very annoying, but when you have to do like 200 math textbook problems on a build, you'll start to gain a hatred for it too and prefer the encyclopedia, which you can just click once and you're done. I actually might be able to power up from this. All right, one more point left before you level up. This should do it. And power 10, very nice. Let's see. Oh, we actually need a lot of these. I'm gonna freeze this and get exoskeleton. Now, hmm, ja Oh wait, conquer your fears, that could be good. Actually no, we want to be insane on the depths so we can get heretics for free. I think I'll just freeze vacuum. Ah, oh, this is a hard choice. I'll just take to the finish. I'll get a rare out of the way. That way, getting piercing well is easier. Overflowing dam? That's not really going to do a lot, but I might take that if there's nothing else to take in the future. Let's see. Nothing else we need here. Let's roll to Anxious Guard. Oh, six song chant as well. Let's see the other thing. And Lightweight. All right. Not the best, but hey, some more talents. All right, let's keep going because we need to get 290 intelligence, which shouldn't take too long, luckily. All right, some corrupt threshers spawn. Let's kill them. Thankfully, there's no one else around now, so it's a lot quicker to kill. Can finally use tornado. What was there? Okay, lionfish fighting diver NPCs, I think. All right, should be able to kill this thresher quick enough that that lionfish won't aggro on me. I'd actually say a problem is those divers getting... Oh, I need to hope the tornado doesn't hit them. Oh, and let's go. These guys are going to go fight the lionfish now. Very convenient for us. They should kill it for us and we'll just get the XP for free. Okay, while they do that, I'm actually going to go fight the threshers. Should have used that tornado a little later. Already posture broken. Very nice. This build's actually doing pretty pretty nice damage for a power 10. Oh, Diver was not supposed to run into that. Thankfully, he, it didn't make him too angry. Yeah, let's throw a gale trap, and the divers should be able to finish off this corrupt thresher for us. You know, I could chuck another tornado into there, but I don't want to risk making the divers angry since these guys are incredibly tanky. I'm just going to chuck gale traps from a distance. Oh, corrupt thresher dead. Very nice. And nothing I can use in the chest. All right, back to using the encyclopedia. All right, yet again, about to power up. This progression is going by pretty fast again. Yeah, I guess going low power gale makes killing things a lot easier than using a zero weapon scaling battle axe for a while. Hey, you know what? I am going to take overflowing dam. It'll do like nothing for most. It'll do pretty much nothing for most of the ferryman fight, but it's good to have. Master craftsman is useful. Then let's see. Uh, grand support does nothing. So I'll just take ethic onto it. More carry loads never hurt anyone. And now I'm going to start going erudition since I want to get six by the end of the build. All right, now I just wait around for more stuff to spawn. All right, guys, I got my friend to come spawn a gastral flame so I could just regen my sanity. It's very useful. This guy wants a blast spark. Uh, no luck. All right, well, I'm just going to use this one random investment point I got to get 70 intelligence and power up. Let's see what we get. Eureka, definitely want that. We're going to be perfect casting mantras quite a bit. Perfect flash. This is 100% needed. Extra mantra damage is always appreciated. And of course, nothing we need here. Let's roll to. Monkey your fears. Actually, that's kind of perfect. Now we don't have sanity as a problem. And we've probably gone insane enough already that we can get Heretic Sutra whenever we need to do that, which will be sort of soon. All right, back to progging. Shocker has already spawned in. Well, actually, there's two Shockers. Can we kill them? Oh, damn. One tornado killed it. And tornado has already killed it. Nice. All right, we're getting XP at a very fast rate. Yo, we just got a cover all ring of casters. 6 HP, let's go. Sadly, I can't equip it just yet, but I should be able to level up intelligence now and be able to equip this Ring of Casters. I'm definitely using it on this build, since if you didn't know, DVM actually doesn't affect Chaser or Fairyman. So that means I might as well use an HP kit or an Ether kit. All right, I'll be back whenever I get power 13. Also, yeah, as you can just see there, I kind of recorded a little too late, but auto intelligence unbound is a thing. I got a lot of people in last progression asking how I automatically unbound the stat. It was something added a little while ago where a stat would automatically unbound if you've unbound it before or after the change was implemented. So basically if you've unbound any stat except for element or weapon in the last couple months then it'll automatically unbound when you reach 75 or 77. Anyways that being said we're about to power up and then I'll finally be able to equip that god roll ring of casters. There we go. 
see. Perfect. Neuron Overload and Thresher Claws. We need both of that. Or Approaching Singularity. We need that as well. Chronostasis. Yeah, it's alright, but Thresher Claws is better. More Mantra Pen is always good. And then True Erudition. Alright, we're getting close to Shrine of Ordering, so let's hope nothing goes wrong. That's probably not foreshadowing. Alright, about to hit 90 intel- Alright, about to hit 90 intelligence already. That's all the intelligence we'll need on this build, and this should let us get the pen on tap for our mantras. That's why we went the 20 gale breath, so we could get this card. Since having 80 pen is a lot better than having 50 pen, so we can equip this ring of casters. Now our tornado is doing 10% more damage. From here, we just need to level up a willpower as much as possible. Although I will need to get an account to transfer notes to, so let me just do that now. Alright, I transferred 1k notes over, so now I can buy the prayer beads and level up my willpower to 80. Hopefully I have decent luck getting piercing will, because I don't want to have to try to blast for me since this build already has two flaws. I probably should have gone simple, but too late to change it. It's not like these two flaws will really affect me anyways. I probably just have enough willpower built up to power up twice. Alright, one power. Ether Overdrive, perfect. I'm gonna freeze this, burn this, and take Ether Overdrive. Then I will take a vacuum punch, and nothing I need here, so let's roll two. Ether kit, we needed that. And uproar. Eh, not really too good. Alright, ran out of willpower points. I'm gonna go train my willpower out here, and wait for even more stuff to spawn. Alright, some more stuff out here. Tornado should be able to just shred this guy. And every hit from that tornado hit him. And already dead. Nice. Nice to see that Tornado is already shredding everything in my path. I'm very excited to see how strong this builds are gonna get when it's at full power. Since, you know, our mantras are only level 1 now. Alright, already about to power up again. Let's check our cards. Uh, I'll take Defiance. I just want to get rares out of the way to make Piercing Will easier to get. Then I guess I'll just take Hardened Nerves. More posture is never really a bad thing. And then all the dead gods. Well, doesn't really do anything for this build, but yet again, getting a rare out of the way is good. And now let's get the 80 willpower we need. Then I believe we can get Heretic Sutra, since we've already been pretty insane on this build from the start of Deep Bound. Worst case, I'll just go make some insanity potions. Alright, that's 80 willpower obtained. Now we're just going to get one Charisma and one Strength, and then we'll just probably dump points into Gale, since we can try to water that down further. But before, but, but before I Shrine of Order, I and you guys need to make sure that you get Heretic Sutra. I've seen some of you miss it, and you kind of just have to wipe if you don't get it, since it's incredibly useful. See, I clicked literally every book before How to Make Friends. But yeah, you do not want to miss Heretic Sutra. It's a completely free item that you get, and it makes this build so much more stronger since it lets you proc lose your mind and piercing will. Okay, let's just buy the dumbbell now. Get our one point of strength. Perfect. Now we need to get one charisma. Let's just stand next to this guard. Me wow. Is that the latest Felinor fashion? Never noticed how weird some of those lines are. Right, that's all the things we need to try to order. Now I'm just going to use the Gal Katana to get the last power. Oh, never mind. I think it should I think it should be fine if we get extra strength. Since Shrine of Order is gonna even out our stats, and we'll end up with less strength overall than what Shrine of Order will take it to. So it's not gonna hurt the build if I do this. I should have enough points saved up. One more, and we should be there. Come on, one point away. Alright guys, we're gonna have to spam the dumbbell for a little bit. This will give us a little bit of strength XP each time, and we're so close that it really shouldn't take long. Right, and there we go. Alright, that's the final power-up before Shrine of Order. Piercing Will, let's go! Alright, I believe that's everything we need pre-Shrine apart from Heretic Sutra. Ooh, Carnivore, we also need that. And then nothing we need from here, let's just roll two. Okay, now I should be able to go down the layer two and get Heretic Sutra. Alright, wish me luck guys. With a little bit of luck, I should be able to get Heretic Sutra. If not, I need to light hook out and get urchins. Now I'll just have to go up here, grab the key. Now I can make this jump. Okay, now I'll put the key in the door. Then as soon as I come out of this door, I'll need to head to the right and just jump down. I will have to deal with carbuncles, but I should be fine. I just need to talk to the NPC and then I can light hook out. Okay, the wind isn't affecting us luckily since I managed to move through it. Alright, now let's jump down and hope that I will went insane enough that one time. Let's go, Heretic Sutra obtained. 
Okay, now we just light hook out before these guys can eat us. All right, guys, if I haven't missed anything, which I really hope I haven't, I should be able to do Shrine of Order. Once I do that, it's just a matter of investing points, and then I'll probably have to go do some chases later for Bell, since I want to since I want to wish to escape depths and you know not play my luck at the trial. I will probably need, I will need to get Dawnwalker soon, which shouldn't be too hard, since I know a very easy method to get it. There's a little crab trying to guard the edge. We can just run past them, luckily. Almost dropped us off the void, but we're good. You know, it'd be very inconvenient if we wiped right before Shrine of Water. That's probably not foreshadowing. This is actually the first build that I've made using the new Shrine of Water changes, so I'm excited to see how it affects the build. It'll probably make it a lot easier to progress. Let's see. All right. Yep. Everything looks perfect. Oh, actually, we do get a little more strength and fortitude than we need, but that should be fine. All right. A little, little more points than we wanted, but we have a lot of spare points at the end of the build, so it's not going to negatively affect anything. Also, yeah, 17 investment points left. That's uh, just a result of the new shrine, I guess. In our post-shrine, I already have the requirements to lose your mind. I already have all the charisma that I'll need on this build, so it seems that I'm just going to go into Gale immediately. All right, very good. You know what? I may regret this later, but I'm going to equip a ring of curses just to make more stuff spawn in the depths. This will mean that I can get more Gale growth training way faster. All right. That tornado is giving me a ton of Gale breath training. And there we go, crab dead. That's probably a oh enchant. Very nice. That means that's probably a whole bunch of gale breath training right there. Let me move these out of my hotbar and put the gale katana here. Let's see how many points we get into gale. I would say we'll power up right here, but I doubt we got that many. Although we did get quite a lot. Already ten points. Very nice. Wait, there's actually a no. Oh, as I was saying it, I thought I actually might power up. All right, this lionfish should do it though. Ooh, wow, that hurt. Ah, uh, still training Gale. I need to move this away from my mantras. I don't want to accidentally click it. So I'm doing a mage build. Metal Rampart, spam mantras. I love that tech. All right, now we should be able to get another power up. Seeing as element is based off damage and tornado does a ton of damage, we are definitely... Oh, never mind. We are at max XP, one point away. Let me try to tag the shocker. I can't use my mantras because there's other people around, but I should be fine. And yep, we can power up. Very nice. Power 17. Grand Feast. We need that. Oh, and we also need that. I'll just freeze Grand Feast and take Suffocating Impact. Oh, Carry Load. Wind Step. Oh, so many good cards here. I think I'll just take Concussive Force since Carry Load is useful. Lose Your Mind. Yeah, we need that 100%. And for our edition. All right, we are starting to run out of points. So I think I might actually just go do layer twos. If I do them now, then I can get bell XP and actual XP. All right, here we are in layer two. There's going to be a lot of layer twos to do. And at a low power, they're not exactly too exciting. So I'll probably just show the chaser and bone keeper fight. Since I don't think you guys want to see me run around layer two with no mobility mantras. This build is not going to be as fast as my main series PvE builds at the end, but it'll still be pretty interesting. But we'll still deal a ton of damage to Bone Keeper and Chaser. I can't use use I can't use lose your mind or piercing will against Bone Keeper just because insanity makes you gain more parasites. But I will use it against Chaser, and we'll see how much damage we're doing at power 17 with level one mantras. All right, here we are at Bone Keeper. Let's hope we can kill it without any incident. Oh wait, I posture broke it. Didn't even notice. That was pretty fast. Tornado again. Oh. Lost our chain stacks there. And Bone Heaper dead. Very nice. It was actually a pretty fast time considering how weak we are at the moment. Anyways, I need to go turn on the generator and get Union Hook. All right, here we are at Ignition Union Base. Let's clear our parasites while we're here and get the Ignition Union Hook. All right, there we go. 
Now I just need to get Spear from Cave, and I should be able to do Chaser, as well as any other leaders. I may actually get Deepshore Fossil on this build, just because Providence Thorns is alright for Fairy Man and Primadon. While I'm just going to transfer a Gale Hero Blade for damage, I might as well experiment with Providence Thorns, since it does a percentage of a since it does a percentage of whatever you parry's health. Oh, I went the wrong way. Sorry, I have it from doing my farming route. I believe Cave is this way. Let's see if I. I just go around here and yep, here's KF. And now I've just got to watch out for the various bounders that are on me. Which should be fine as long as I run very fast. Alright, there we go. Now we've just got to jump down here. I'll put a tornado just to kill this guy. Go away. Do not, I don't want to bother fighting that guy. Don't really get anything out of it. Of course, if you've seen my other Gale Mage progression, which had Brick Wall and was a lot more tanky than this build, you'd know about the tech where I can just go down this little hole at, and fall through the map. And boom, I'm outside. Of course, there will be bounders here that I recently spawned in. Oh, I just got to make sure that I run very fast because these guys hurt. <clears throat> oh, I am not of high health at the moment. Oh, okay, I think I made it through. Oh, my health is not looking good right now. Oh, oh we're dead. Rip. They're both trying to kill me. All right. I think I might as well take the uni hook next time. Future editing skipper gripper here. I don't even remember if I mentioned this in the video, but I was doing a new Gale build simply because I saw Asphalt Cake, one of my favorite streamers. So I decided I wanted to try to make a very good Fairyman farming build. And well, that's why this progression exists. But as I was editing this video, he ended up getting world record with his build. So definitely check Asphalt Cake out. His streams are very chill. Anyways, I'll let's get back to your normally scheduled progression. Alright guys, I just got Spear. I didn't spawn the Bounders this time, but whatever. Oh! Flip through the door. Alright, as I was saying, I didn't spawn Bounders this time, so it was easier. Now I've just got to go through Bounders Nest and go to Chaser. I don't think this build will kill him very fast at all, since we're missing a ton of damage. But hopefully it'll be less than 5 cycles. Alright, I'll show once again just how I go through Bounders Nest. Since normally I'll go out of bounds to skip it in my runs, but it's very useful to know. Basically, I just stick by this wall and then climb up immediately. This build is very squishy at the moment, so I cannot risk getting hit by Bounders more than I have to. Luckily, by taking this route, none of them can hit me, and I can get past Bounders Nest safely. Now I just go over here and continue to go towards Chaser. Make that jump. Oh, almost bad. We're good though. And now we're just going to climb up here. I might kill this Bone Keeper right before Chaser, just for the sake of chain stacks. Well, I'll probably get hit during Chaser. It's not a bad thing to have extra chain stacks. All right, well, lost all of our chain stacks and like all of our health. Okay, I think he should be about to die here. There we go. All right, we don't have many chain stacks, but it should hopefully help to kill Chaser a little bit faster. All right, before I start Chaser, I'm going to use Heretic Sutra. This should proc lose your mind and piercing will. So uh, let's talk to him. Just hold block and tornado should do everything. Now I'm going to place a Gale Trap where he lands. That'll give me a little bit more damage. Oh, missed that last parry. Rest in peace our chain stacks, but it's probably fine. Just going to hold block. I'll let tornado damage him. All right. Sadly, the ceiling didn't fall after one phase, but that's fine. I'll use Heretic Sutra again for a little more damage. Gonna try to minimize getting hit. We don't have a good way of healing on this build, so I'd rather not take that much damage. All right, with a little luck, the ceiling should fall this time around. All right, there we go. All right, next chase is stun. Just let Tornado shred his HP. All right, hopefully I can not get hit and conserve chain stacks now. Getting chased at a half health is very deceptive. Normally when the ceiling falls, it sometimes means you're half health, but not always. For instance, I don't think Chase is even dead here. Oh, no, I'm wrong. All right. I think if I just stand here, uh, I shouldn't take damage. Oh, perfect. I can just stand here for the rest of Chaser. All right, this should give me decent XP. Okay, hopefully I get more than one investment point. All right, five points. We get six. This could actually... Oh, never mind. Oh, that was actually less than I was expecting. All right, well, I'm going to... Probably do a few more layer twos, or I'll just farm in the depths. All right, I think this should be another power up. Hopefully, we get a. Oh, never mind. I am one point off. All right, I gotta find something I can get one point off. 
Hopefully the jellyfish can give me one point. Although I doubt it. Did not realize that was there. That's a corrupt owl. Yeah, I'm good, buddy. You know, you have a good day. Run! Oh, I think I'm good. Let me just like... All right, I'm gonna let the divers deal with this corrupt owl. I'll just throw gale traps at it so I get credit. I mean, there's a high chance this owl just falls into the void, but if it doesn't, that's a lot of XP. And there the owl goes into the void. It should despawn any minute. Kind of knew that was gonna happen, but at least I don't have to fight a corrupt owl. All right, I can power up now. All right, we have two more powers left now till we hit power 20. Let's see, I think I'll just take a breathing impact here. Then I'll take aftercut. And then I don't need either of these so i'll just take one passage all right back to killing stuff all right let's let's see if tornado can one shot a shocker there we go very easy okay let's see is this owl corrupt it's not corrupt i actually might be able to kill it now we use tornado and they're both dead a lot of stuff spawning that ring of curses is definitely helping right, there we go crab dead should have a bunch of points already let's see how many points we can get all right, not too many. We're gonna need to kill Chaser again soon, just for the unmount. All right, after this Gale Breath point, I am at the limit, so I've gotta go kill Chaser to unbound my Gale Breath. I'll see you all when I've done that. All right, Chaser should be dead now, and perfect. That was a lot quicker than last time. With this, we should unbound our Gale Breath and hopefully be able to get to power 19. All right, Chaser dead, let's see. One point, one more to go, and hey, power 19. See, Haunted Gale definitely needs that i want to try and get spectre so let's hope it shows up and perfect oh we need an inhale as well astral wind yep and i'll just take my next point to erudition all right nothing i really need here all right let's escape and keep training gale breath all right guys we should be about to power up there we go power 20 possession do i actually need that hmm let's see you know what i'll freeze it if i get nothing else good i guess i'll take it Concussion. Concussion for the carry load. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll just take possession here. Might as well. Gale Wisp, I need that. I'll just keep it. I'll just keep it saved for now. I'll equip it later. All right, guys. We should get to 100 Gale Breath now. I've killed a bunch of stuff. And 100 Gale Breath. All right. With our last nine points, I'm going to get to 70 Intelligence. So I can get 1% extra pen. So after that, I guess... After that, I guess I'll just see what I can do with my points. All right, guys, I have four investment points left before this build is fully maxed. I'm kind of unsure what to put it in, so I guess I'll just put it into intelligence. The only things that I can get at this point is just more ether. Sadly, strength won't increase my mantra pen, so I'll just put it into ether. It'll only, it'll only give me a tiny bit more, but... There's not really anything else I can get on this build. All right, guys, I have... Well, I've got enough XP for me to get to 74 intelligence. So now I've got to do the most boring part of the progression and get Bell off Chaser. While I could do Atheron for Bell XP, I'd like to at least have the safety net of a Bell for him since this build isn't the tankiest. Anyways, I'll probably just show the end of each Chaser since I don't think you guys want to see me do the same route every time. All right, that's another chaser kill i think if i do like five or six that should be plenty of chasers for bell xp also blood of flare karma is pretty nice all right next chaser down all right this is chaser number three chaser number four all right and that's all right number five yeah i, I wanted to save them <laughs> i had to fight him for the money oh my god legendary bell you have to give me money now all right guys i am finally going to escape depths I have my crazy slots, which I will not really be using on this build at all. So I think I'll talk to young Shoal and wish to escape. I will need idols in the future, but that should be fine. I'm going to go to the overworld to get my talent hands and do Kaido with some friends. While I'm at it, I've got Wind Passage here, and I'm just going to modify it. I don't have everything I need for it, but I can at least put max perfect lenses on it to make it grow further. Pretty sure that's what it does. Yeah, that goes super far. Plus, I can inhale to make it go even further. All right, I'm going to go to Eastern Luminant because my friends are going to start doing a Kaido. And, well, I might as well fight it with them since, you know, I have a fair amount of auto manifestations. And by that, I mean one. Almost lost our boat there. All right, gates are luckily right over here. We're going to do it at Monkey's Paw at that cheese spot simply because Kaido is way easier to kill. All right, I just got dropped the last of the umbrella I need to craft this Prophet's Cloak. So now I have 20% pen on my mantras, which means I'm dealing even more damage. Even though my mantras are still level 1, I want to test how much damage I'm doing to my friend. 
since I have just found out a deadly combo for this build. Alright, now we just... Stop the warriors is fighting. How much damage? 36. 36? Okay. Alright, I forgot to record it for some reason, but I just killed up. But I just killed Kaido with my friends, and my Ardor Orb will hopefully be arriving any minute. I think I'll just- oh, there we go. Ardor obtained. Now I can get Ardor Scream when I eventually get my extra talent hands. Worst case, I'll just have to reroll on it, which is fine because if you haven't noticed, we have 33 knowledge. And we're about to do some Primadons for fun. Alright guys, I'm gonna start the first extra talent hand quest. All right, we've acquired the book. Now I've just got to go hand it in. There's quite a bit I actually want off this extra talent hand. Hopefully I get auto scream to start with. Okay, there we go. Apparently I just couldn't hold it out. Silences, bleed, snake oil, apparitions, and auto scream. Oh, we want both of those. Oh, wait, we want all of it. We want most of these. Not just freeze this and take auto scream. So, you know, 25% damage is massive. Besides, we've still got three more talent hands to get. Alright, now we've got to come here, run past these guys, and we've got to go find Lars. I usually forget the way to get to Lars every time, but I've been doing so many different progressions lately because I've came up with so many good ideas for builds that I'm remembering it a lot better than I used to. Seriously, seriously, finding that pathway through used to take me like half an hour. I mean, that's slight exaggeration, but I never used to actually... I mean, that's slight exaggeration, but I never knew this cave as well as I do now. So hey, at least I'm improving in my progressions. Now I've just got to try to get up here. Kind of hard without Wind Step, which we didn't roll on this build. Although Wind Step doesn't really matter for fairy men, so it's fine. Alright, found Lars. Now we'll just go here. And let's head back and hand the... Let's go back and get our extra mantra hand. Alright, let me just run past these guys again. Weird that they still hate you after I found their body. Let's return elemental rebound. Right, do not need any of these. Let me just burn some useless ones. Do need that, that, all that. And there we go, I'll take apparitions. Alright, final talent hand. We've just got to kill a Shaco. And they're obviously just gonna die in like one second with this build. Oh, two pteropods. You know what, let me kill them both. One dead. And another one dead. Very easy. They stood no chance against the sheer amount of damage I do. So like two chakras here. Ah, uh, doesn't matter though. They're both dead anyways. Was one an event? Oh, no. Wait. Okay, one of the chakras was an event. He just spawned over where the normal chakra is. Weird. Alright, final talent hand handed in. I kind of want to get snake oil, but we'll see if there's anything we're missing. Alright, nothing we need, sadly. We don't have suffocated. That doesn't do anything. So I guess I'll just take this for extra movement. Although it's not really that useful. Anyways, now I guess I just... Anyways, now I guess I just go get Mantra Quest and reroll some talents. Alright, let's start Mantra Quest. And as always, I need to play skill base as close by as I can just so I can reset back to vigils when I'm done. You know, I can't place it here just because I'm enemies, but I should be able to go out and find a location to put it. While I'm at Etrus, I should probably buy some... While I'm at Etrus, I'm going to try to buy some wood just so I can turn it in to make Etrus not hate me as much. All right, I was only able to buy 25 wood, but a couple trips should mean that's enough. I don't have a lot of money since I've been in the depths, unable to sell the progression, but hopefully I'll have enough to clear my rep or at least get it neutral. All right. I think this should get my rep neutral with Beatrice. Let me go speak to a guard and see if they hate me. All right, let's see. Hey, they don't hate me. All right, perfect. Now we can go about our business as planned. All right, I'm actually going to come in here and try to buy a stiletto or a cestus. There we go, stiletto. I'm going to buy this and actually equip it. You might be confused, but having this equipped makes the divine dagger more common from crazy slots, I think. I don't know how much more common it is, but having but having Grim on a stiletto should hopefully let me proc it more on Ferryman. All right, let's talk to this NPC, then this one. Then once I'm out of danger, I can just reset back to visuals to complete the quest. It's a very fast way to do it. All right, back at vigils. Now I've just got to go talk to the Mantra Quest NPC and hopefully get taunt. Oh, actually, before I forget, I want to use Mystic because I need to try to guarantee getting taunt. If I'm lucky, I should get it. If not, it's fine. Taunt isn't actually required on this build. It's just a nice extra thing you can get. All right, let's hope we get lucky and no taunt. 
unfortunate. And it's fine, in the end I didn't actually care what I got. In the end I didn't actually care what I got too much, so it's fine. Guess I'll just take whatever this is for now. I believe that should be strong left. Yep. Alright, now I just need to try to get Blinding Dawn. So guys, I've decided to do a few Ferrymans, just for the sake of having extra idols. That way I can go down to depths to complete this build and safely escape. This won't be an amazing ferryman, but let's do him. This won't be an amazing ferryman, but let's give it a try. Alright, that was a very slow ferryman, but don't worry, we're going to be getting a lot quicker at them. I'm just not warmed up yet, and I got hit a ton. Alright, perfect. Got an idol of young Shoal. Alright guys, let's head down to depths, and we're going to try to get Blinding Dawn. Here's your guard. Oh, it didn't happen. All right, guys, we have 30 medallions after a floor two run. Now I should be able to get radiant magic and perfect. You know what that means? We got blinding dawn. All right, now we can shred ferryman. I'm at it. Since I should have extra slots now, I can have a full hop bar. All right, now I just got to get my gale marchers to level five. So yeah, tornado is taking up 3% ether. Anyways, now I get my gale marchers to level five and then I can can shred ferryman. All right, to the surface we go. All right, I'm going to try to mine a bunch of coal ores just so I'll have infinite umbral flint for ferryman. Since I have void eye, I can already buy wood as I please. So this will just make me grinding him a lot easier. All right, guys, after a bunch of ferryman, so I think I've got enough items to sell that I should have enough notes to max out my mantras. Then I'm going to practice to do some ferryman and actually show you guys what a good ferryman looks like on this build. All right, guys, we are ending this with 7,000 notes earned from all our ferryman loot. So I should be able to max out all of our gale mantras pretty easily. All right, back at the Etrian Luminant. The training we need is just up there. All right, now let's level up our mantras. This new GUI is very useful for doing it. This is also my first time seeing it. There's not really much of a point to having all of our mantras at level five. It's kind of just a nice thing to have. Although now this is going to give us a lot more damage against Ferryman and make him way easier. That being said, this build is virtually maxed. I'm just going to try to transfer a Hero Blade of Wind over from my other Gale slot. Guys, I have horrible news. Divine crits do not work on ferryman it's very unfortunate because i would have loved to use divine dagger crit since you've seen how it shreds players health bars but unfortunately he just teleports away so it seems like getting crazy slots is only going to make this build insane for everything that isn't ferryman Although me saying that doesn't really mean anything because we're still getting insanely fast times against ferryman so let me try to get you a good run so you can see just how powerful this PvE build is. All right, editing Skipper Gripper here once again. I was listening to copyrighted music, so I'm just gonna commentate over this. So I first M1, auto screaming Gale Trap to get a lot of damage in. I can actually land a Gale Punch there, but I just don't. Then I do this little combo, and by now most of his health is generally gone. I've just gotta dodge this Gale Trap again, and Tornado usually finishes off Ferryman if I do it hitless. There we go, that was my fastest Ferryman. If you're wondering, that was around a 20 second run, which is pretty good. All right guys, now that you've seen just how good this build is in Ferryman, I think this is the end of the 10,000 Mantra damage build progression. As you know, this build is capable of getting some top three times with Ferryman as well as one-shotting a player and reaching the damage cap, even on a Knorr with give or take, which if you didn't know, reduces the damage by 50%. So yeah, it's safe to say that I have made the highest damage mage build in the game. And as always, if you want to get the build maker for any of my builds, you need to join the Discord, since it'll be there. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and check out some other PvE content. And I'll see you next time.